Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. In commiseration of our long-suffering cutting mat, getting a little haggard around the edges. I figured we won't put her out to pasture, but we're gonna send her down to the miners on another bench as a replacement day. Oh, ho, ho, ho. fuck yeah. New cutting mat day. A little bit bigger, mind. A little bit bigger. Oh yeah, that's a fucking lot bigger. Get in there. <laughs> and uh, straight from J.A. Pan, Ulfa. I like that, they make good stuff. They don't, they, they don't fuck around. Something about uh, Japanese and quality. I find, anyway. But uh, yeah, what are we doing? Okay, so, friends in low places. Cheddar. Friends in low places being what it is, thank you very much, uh, anonymous masked stranger in the dirty, greasy, uh, stained, and <laughs> above all, stained overcoat. While normally I, I tell you you need a ticket to ride this train, in your case, we'll, we'll take just the stub. <laughs> thank you very much. We're going to have a boo with this. This is an industrial, uh, I would say it's very likely a motor, and... It's got something especial about it. Made in Sweden, no less. One of the highest uh, standards of living Western countries in the world, if not the highest standard of living. And yet still, they manage to make industrial Lego bits. Still make money at it. Still are able to make high quality product and, and make money at it. There's a lesson in that. There's a lesson in that. So having a quick peek at this, we can tell that it's an SAE a two bolt flange, maybe uh, maybe an A or a B, and just a keyed shaft. And it's got to be a motor because the inlet and outlet are the same size. Now, what type of motor? I'm not sure. What this third port would be? very likely would be a drain port for bypass leakage just to allow any internal leakage which is completely normal because hydraulics uh, motors and so forth the oil is actually providing some sealing so there's some design leakage there we allow that to go back to tank that also provides cooling so without getting too deep into her without getting too deep into her let's uh well let's get into her Coming from Sweden, a continental country, one would assume quite safely that uh, it's going to be metric. However, very likely only the fasteners are going to be metric and everything else is going to be standard. It's going to be inch standard. Now, that's quite a small shaft, maybe 5 eighths. Um, but these are not going to be, the ports are not going to be metric. They are going to be... I'd be willing to bet O-ring boss, sure enough, got that nice little chamfer O-ring boss. So uh, O-ring boss, that means inch standard threads, fine pitch threads, everything in uh, on the bolt bolting pattern and so forth is all inch, even though this was made in Sweden. Oh, we'll get in right in there. Ah! Tappy, tap, tap. Never force it. Just grab a bigger hammer. Tap it, tap, tap. Well, that's interesting. What the fuck those are? Okay. Whoa! <laughs> I was uh, I was expecting a girler or a gear rotor but this is a bent axis piston pump in fucking cred the ball we got the nose going on river beautifully machined all it's got is just a double lip seal appears to be viton how can they get away this is a low pressure seal how can they get away with that because this of course is probably three thousand pound rated psi rated well because the case is vented is ported back to tank. So this is actually only at tank pressure. This is a great feature for troubleshooting because if you have a component that's suspect, all you need to do is pull that case drain line off and see how much oil is flowing out of there. If it's got excess flow, like if it's pissing out of there, 
then chances are your components are worn right out. Here's an interesting feature we saw when we split it apart. There was a big gap there. Uh, this, the back section, doesn't actually seal on the front section. There's an intermediary gland, what's got all the O-rings in there. That looks like a Teflon seal, but it's actually paint. So just a couple of O-rings and no backup ring at all is sealing that, uh, whatever it is, maybe 20 PSI of case pressure. Now that's how that goes together. Now this is a bent axis motor, and I'll see if I can get that to pop out there. Now I'm not quite sure how this is supposed to work, so I'm kind of just figuring it out as I go. Definitely an interesting part. Hmm. Had a bit of a struggle with this. Obviously, I don't have the proper service tools, but there's a blind circlip in there, transmission style duckbill uh, circlip, but it retains that in the bore on that shaft. And here we have the, uh, the manifold plate here in order to get the oil to go in and out. And if you'll allow me to do some clarification for you, this, of course, is a bent axis uh, radial no, axial piston motor. <laughs> That's the nomenclature of it. These two gears engage on each other, those two spur gears. What happens is oil comes in the one side, pressurizes. That means that these pistons push out. In order for that piston to push out, because it's on a bent axis, it needs to be able to turn this. So these little pistons are sitting in these ball and sockets. As this pushes out, it needs to turn this. And because this is indexed with that, as it turns, as it turns the output, it also turns this uh, rolling element cage, the uh, piston sleeve, the piston body, the cylinders. It moves the cylinders much, much like a, it's like a six shooter, right? So what happens is, at the uh, at the one end, at the inlet end, the pistons are like this, and then as we pressurize, it turns and it has to move out. So what's going on is these pistons are constantly moving in and out as they go through 360 degrees of rotation. On the inlet stroke, the pistons would be moving out. On the exhaust, the uh, pistons would be moving in. So all these are part of the rotating section. This output shaft is inch beautifully machined. Everything is just perfect, perfectly machined. So what we'll do is this has a castellated nut and a castellated uh, retention washer. We will uh, knock that down. And what that does is it preloads these tapered roller bearings. And you can see the preload on there is quite tight. I can't turn that with my hand. And it was quite snug even in the bore. So I'll loosen this nut off. And then uh, we'll split that. We'll explode this and see how all this works. Now we'll just get in there with everybody's uh, favorite libation. The Nipex pliers, and it shouldn't be tight. Not tight because it's just preloading those tapered roller bearings. And there's the retention washer. And that's on there. Fucking, why is that on there so tight? Uh, just a wee tap. Just a wee tap. Now in the vise, featuring a very useful tool, the bearing splitter. And we channel our inner millwright, but got the learner hammer here, copper, non-marring. And we'll just give her a little tappy tap tap. And out she comes. I would have thought this this re, uh, this spacer ring would have been threaded into something, but it's just strictly a spacer. And uh, there we go. That's it. Feast your eyes on the beauty of taking apart industrial stuff. We get to see uh, some amazing attention to detail in this piece. So this solid piece turned down a whole bunch of different processes, beautifully machined, and then even either passivated or some sort uh, of coating or process, chemical process, in order to, uh, well, you see the difference here. This has been ground for the bearing race. And this, all this component has been Pa passivated or 
I wouldn't say nitrided, but something, they did something to this. And look at this, even on the threads. You see that at the start of the threads, so it doesn't catch. They've, ch they've chamfered that down. They just touched that up. Beautiful, beautiful, amazing machining. And look at this. So we know this is an industrial piece because tapered roller bearings, extremely good at axial thrust. So what's going on here is we have hydraulic pressure that's thrusting actually axially that is actually getting this to rotate so a tremendous amount of axial force we could probably oh i could probably guesstimate this so that's um that's three eighths right that's around a three eighths bore another feature here you would think that'd be machined or oh, one piece there's actually four or three three tiny little maybe 15 thou thick uh, 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 uh cast or ductile iron rings in there sealing rings all independent but as i was saying so that's three eighths so pi r squared is going to give you times three thousand psi uh, you probably get 200 300 pounds out of this just one of these and say there's three pressurized at a time you get a thousand pounds uh, axial now both of these can withstand an incredible amount of axial thrust so just so incredibly overbuilt as to be nearly ridiculous super super skookum spared no expense and you pay for it. You pay for this when you buy the the industrial gear. You pay for it. It's expensive, but it's made to last. Now the preload on tapered roller bearings is absolutely critical. So there will be a torque spec there. And click. And then just back it off and double check, essentially. Remember. This is not at operating temperature, so it's going to heat up a little bit. And when it heats up, it expands. So we don't want to cinch it right down. We just want it so it contacts. Now I'm going to change my gloves, get this the old spit polish, see if we can't get her back together, and then maybe run it on air to see if we can get her chooching. I do have a hydraulic power pack here that's not set up on the drive. I threw out the too shabby drive that uh, ran it. I haven't wired it up yet, so... We'll, we'll try and run this on air, and if we can, we'll get the boroscope right in the casement and see what we can see while it's actually turning. Lean in close and listen real careful. That's the sound of the one fella what's had this apart laughing. Doesn't think we can get her back together. But, uh, <laughs> he doesn't know how determined a, a solitary bumblefuck is. Granted, I have had her up and down a couple times now, uh, to no avail, and using all every trick in the book, and greasing her right up proper. I think I got her now, on account of industrial gear normally has very good documentation. Well, commodity items like this normally has, especially name brand like Parker, coming from Europe. That's about as good as you're going to get on the uh, documentation. So I got on the gargler, did the old jazz hands routine, sure enough. They didn't have this number of pump. They've changed the pump numbers, but they did have an F11. And you look through the assembly, and uh, there's a nice lady with uh, painted blue nails on there, what's uh, done a manual for us. And it clearly shows that this, this has to be outside of this. One problem that the manual brought up, which I missed, is that there's a timing mark here. Of course, you want this time, so this is directly in line with this. It could be off by a little bit and then it's cocked over, you're not gonna get full stroke or it'll, it'll seize up and bend this. So, the problem is, this mating one does not have timing marks. So what I should have done when I took it apart was put a little witness mark on there. Now we get the dick in the vise and just got rid of this ring and lo and behold, there is a mark here. Uh, initially, it just looked like a grinding mark, but it appears as though it's the only one there. Gotta be the timing mark. So, now we get this in here, like this, and uh, trust me, it's easier than it looks. Close fuck off. 
Woo! We're just gonna go in there with the boroscope. These are great, man. Android boroscopes, 15 bucks. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fuck! This is the old phone later. Fuck you, you fucking goofs. Worse than Java. Oh, now it's fucking stalled. Once again for the second time. Okay. We go in there. And she looks like she's good to go. Get the timing mark and all that proper. So we'll just set this up. Ah, oh, for fuck's sakes. Fucking compressor. Fuck! It doesn't end, boys. It just doesn't end. And that is why when I am beneficent warrior poet of the world, all compressors are going to have variable frequency drives. Frog snacks. Contact. Here, filleting. So fast. Update speed of this camera might not be the best either. Well, you get the idea. Pretty freaking cool, I think. An incredible piece of engineering here. Hydraulics, I mean, they amaze me. How much you figure this thing will take in horsepower? This is a, a, a fixed displacement, bent axis, axial piston pump. Reversible, of course. It'll go forward and reverse, and it's got uh, externally drained. So, what do you figure? How many horsepower will this thing uh, put out? I'll tell you what, according to the nameplate, this thing will chooch at nearly 12,000 ripples. It'll draw 110, it'll take 110 liters per minute at 420 bar max. So, we just rule a thumb that, we say 400 bar, we say 100 liters per minute. That is 75 kilowatts. That's a hundred horsepower in literally the palm of your dirty old dick beater. In fucking credible. Hydraulics, man. Coolest freak. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.